In our last episode, we covered using distributed tracing with OpenTelemetry to identify the sources of application latency. But what do you do once you know which microservice is causing the issue? Or what if your service is serving an elevated error rate? What do you do then? This is where logging comes in. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use cloud logging to ingest, route, store, and view logs from your services and use them to fully understand what your service is doing. Welcome to Engineering for Reliability with Google Cloud. But first, what do we mean when we say logs? We use logs to specifically describe an event that takes place in our system. Logs are written by our code, by the platform our code is running on, and the infrastructure we depend on. Because logs in modern systems are the descendant of, and sometimes still are, text log files written to disk, a log entry analogous to a line in a log file is the quantum unit of logging. An entry will generally consist of a timestamp that indicates either when the event took place or when it was ingested into the logging system, and the payload, either as unstructured text data or structured data, most commonly in JSON. Logs can also carry associated metadata, like the resource that's writing them, the log name, and the severity for each entry. In Google Cloud, logs originate from multiple sources. First, Google Cloud services emit logs for both auditing and troubleshooting purposes. These are enabled by default and cannot be disabled directly. The infrastructure you provision and apps you run in Google Cloud can also emit logs. These are largely controlled by you as the user. Finally, networking components and services emit logs as well. Some of these, like VPC flow logs, can be controlled by the user, while others are considered part of the platform and cannot be disabled. No matter where the logs come from, Cloud Logging receives log entries through the Cloud Logging API. From there, they pass through the log router. The syncs in the log router check each log entry against existing inclusion and exclusion filters that determine if the log entry should be sent to storage destinations, including cloud logging buckets or excluded entirely from ingestion. You can use syncs to route logs to multiple destinations, such as Google Cloud Storage for archiving, BigQuery for analytics, or PubSub to be processed further by services such as Cloud Dataflow or consumed by third-party systems. This is also where exclusions happen if you have any configured. Each sync lets you enter one or more exclusion filters, which let you exclude matching log entries from being routed to the sync's destination. Typically, these are used as a cost optimization approach. Next, logs are sent to log buckets, which act as containers in your Google Cloud projects to store and organize your logs data. The logs that you store in cloud logging are indexed, optimized, and delivered to let you analyze your logs in real time. Note that these are different storage entities than cloud storage buckets. You can create syncs to route all or just a subset of your logs to any log bucket. This flexibility allows you to choose the cloud project in which your logs are stored and what other logs are stored with them. Once your logs are in buckets, you can use log views to control who has access to the logs within your log buckets. You can centralize or subdivide your log storage based on your needs. Custom log views provide you with a granular way to control access to the logs in your buckets. For example, Consider a scenario in which you store all of your organization's logs in a central project. Because log buckets can contain logs from multiple projects, you might want to control which projects different users can view logs from. Using custom log views, you can give one user access to logs only from a single project, and another user access to logs from all the projects. So far, you've seen how platform application and networking logs are ingested through the Cloud Logging API, and how the logs router sends them to their destinations, either in log buckets or log sinks. Next, let's have a look at how you can view and query logs in cloud operations, starting with the Logs Explorer. To access the Logs Explorer, go to the Products menu. From Logging, select Logs Explorer. Initially, this shows you all logs in your project. On the left side, you can use log fields to select just the logs that you care about. For example, if you have a service running on GKE, and you want to figure out what errors it's generating, select Kubernetes container as the resource, the name of your container, and error as the severity. This will filter all the logs down to just error logs being produced by your service. The histogram shows you the volume of logs that matches your query over the selected time interval. If you want to zero in on a specific point in time, just drag the selectors to the time you care about and rerun the query. Logs that match your query are shown here in the Query Results section. To get the full details of a log entry, select it. This will show you both the metadata and the payload. To see other logs that have the same payload or any other field, 
Click a field and select Show Matching Entries to rerun the query for those. The query is shown up here. You can edit it directly and you can save it to be used later. Saved queries show up here. Logs Explorer even generates suggested queries for you based on what's happening in your project. This is how you can use the Logs Explorer to find the exact log entries you need to determine what's happening with your service. The Logs Explorer is great at helping you find the logs that you need when you need them. But what if you're debugging a service and want to watch the logs in real time? This is where log streaming comes in. Let's have a look. In order to stream logs, you first have to find the logs that you care about. You can do that by writing a query or by using the log field selectors. So let's say you want to troubleshoot a Cloud Composer workflow. Select Cloud Composer Environment on the left-hand side. Once you've run the query, you have the option to stream logs. Click that button and the Query Results section will expand to make it easier to see and select log entries. The logs are now streamed with the newest entry showing up at the top of the list. To pause the stream so that you can inspect the particular entry, just scroll down. Then select an entry just as before. Once you're done with that entry, you can restart the stream and you'll see the most recent logs at the top of the list again. If you have the information you need, stop the stream and get back to the query. So that's how you can use log streaming to see the log entries as they appear essentially in real time. Streaming logs in the console is fantastic, but what if you prefer to use the command line? Well, there's now a gcloud command you can use to do just that. Let's have a look at that. To stream logs from the command line, simply use the gcloud alpha logging tail command. Use a filter to get just the logs you care about. You can use the query editor to get the filter correct. When you enter the command, the tail session will be initiated and the logs will start streaming into the console. As you can see, this can be hard to read, so you may want to redirect this to an output file to make it easier. That's how you can use the command line to stream logs by using the gcloud alpha logging tail command. Thanks for joining me today. We covered the basics of cloud logging, how logs are ingested, routed, and stored, how you can query logs from log buckets using the Logs Explorer, and how you can stream them in real time using the console and the command line. I hope this helps you find issues faster and keep your services reliable and your users happy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to never miss out on more engineering for reliability with Google Cloud. See you soon.